we were working on building this two-dimensional detail. Now what we're looking at is creating using fills and lines to create two-dimensional construction detailing. This is to help us understand construction more, to help us maybe design the finish. In this case, we're looking at an, an existing materiality, the existing building, the existing building structure, and the existing building cladding and finish. And of course, we can then edit this to be able to make it very usable for what we're doing when we create um, our alterations and additions. So we're going to just continue to build this and we're going to go up and up and up. So we started with the ground, we've got a footing sitting in the earth with a sand and gravel bedding underneath that. We have a single brick wall because this is our basement garage or subfloor garage and we have an engaged pier here. Now if you notice, I've mentioned before and I'll mention again, I'm going to show you detailing that's not necessarily exactly what you would find with this particular project if you measured the sum of the sizes of this material. In some situations I'm going to change these to more conventional modern construction sizes in terms of the sizes of timber and, and such so that way it's a bit more familiar with what you'll come across with other projects. We, one of the things that I will keep as consistent even though it is unlikely to happen commonly is that we have a flooring here which is tongue and groove hardwood flooring directly over our floor joists. Commonly we won't do that anymore. Commonly what will happen is we'll have a structural subfloor such as plywood or yellow tongue, low density fiberboard or something like that. Can everyone have a look at this That if they're not? So there are some things that we need to think about in terms of construction. Like I said, I'm trying to simultaneously teach you things about construction and simultaneously how to use ARCHICAD. So we're trying to achieve two things. So there's a lot involved in this process. One of the things we need to think about if we're using tongue and groove flooring is that it's not very rigid. It's not likely going to be strong enough to stop our joists from tipping over. Now in common modern construction we might use blocking where we get this type of a piece of timber, a joist, and then we run them between the joists. However, when we're thinking about slightly more conventional or traditional construction, that's a lot of wasted timber. This is a big chunky piece of hardwood and that's very expensive to cut another big block out of that. So it's, it's a wasting of material, but maybe saving time. What we find is happening in this instance instead is that they went for an option which was wasting of time or spending more time but making the material cheaper. They had a piece of crossed timber. So we see that there was a piece of timber here and I need to just move up. So let's make it, we'll make it 45 by 45. We had a piece of timber that went up here and crossed over and I'll mirror a copy of these. So there's two bits of timber that crossed over each other and these ran all the way through the joists. This is called herring bone strutting. So this is a piece of timber that stops the joists from twisting. So these cross over and then they're usually nailed or screwed in the middle. And there's less timber than if we were doing it out of solid blocking, but there's more work involved in creating it. How would we show it? We show it just like this other one here, so we can show in elevation. We're not cutting through it in section. It's not consistent. It's infrequent would be another way of saying that. So we could represent it like that. Of course, the problem with this representation is that's not really what we'd see. We don't see this overlap. So what's really happening is that we see one of them. And so we have to cut out. One of them is in front of the other. So we could show it just like that. Or if we wanted to be particularly pedantic, we could split it. And then we could change the outline 
to a dashed line, hidden line. Problem is I broke too many. So the other way to do it would just be to use a line. Let's try to find one of a good scale. That's a bit better. So that's now representing effectively what we want to see. And once we've done that, we get it right first, group it together, and then we can create copy, move, drag multiple copies. And of course that would be hidden by this display order in the front. So that's the representation of what we're showing. We're missing something. We're missing the insulation. Now the insulation sits between these joists as well. How was the insulation done? In, in this instance we're talking about a subfloor. So this was done in two different ways. This was done with a rigid insulation, foam, and this was done with a blanket insulation. So how do we create those? If we click on our object library, we're going to change this to ArchiCAD layer, and if we type in insul, we have an object called fiber insulation 22. I want to turn off the contours. Another, line, another word for that would be the lines, the outlines. And this is a parametric object, it has parameters, and these pink dots mean we can stretch it or move it. So depending on which pink dot I click on, this allows me to stretch its angle. If I click on this pink dot, that allows me to stretch its length. If I click on this pink dot, it allows me to change its height, and so on. So I will move it into place. We can see at the moment the problem is that it's hiding everything. So if I click on it, we need to change its fill settings. So I don't want it to have a background fill. I want to change its background pen to empty, and that means I can see through it. So I can now stretch that down to the right size, stretch that across so it fills the space, but re remembering I need to stretch the bottom if I don't want it to be uneven. So we could make it look like that. Now we're trying to simultaneously show a few different things. We're showing the herringbone, herringbone strutting, and we're showing the insulation and with this type of insulation it's clear enough of what we're trying to do. Now if we were trying to show the rigid foam it's a little bit harder to make that show correctly. Um, we're using a fill, it looks messier so we, what are we looking for? There's a few different fills that we could be trying to create. There's one here that's called rigid insulation so we're going to use the one that's in ArchiCAD at the moment and we'll have a look to see if they're suitable for what we're trying to do. So let's draw a rectangular box. So we see it's squares. I don't think this is very good or appropriate for rigid insulation. What else do we have? We've got another one, rigid insulation 2, which is squares, but it's now turned 45 degrees. And this is better. I still don't think it's fantastic. Some of you might have, if you were to type H, you might have one that is a hexagon or hexagonal and this is probably the best type to represent our insulation but it's too big so if we pick up the settings of this alt pick up the settings of our hexagon options element attributes fills then it will take us into our hexagon now I'm going to create a copy of this I'll press new I want to duplicate it and I'm going to type in Robert, just so it's prefaced with my name, and I'll write insulation rigid. And I want to make this much, much smaller. So let's make this 10 to begin with. Press OK, and we'll change this one 
to that new name. I think it's a bit easier to find because I put it in caps lock. So now we can see that's what that looks like. It looks a little, a little bit like bird's mesh. Um, not necessarily what I'm after, chicken wire. Um, I want to use a gray fill so it's not so vibrant, but we can also see that it's taking up a lot of, it's, it's confusing with the hair ribbon moment strutting. So it either needs to sit behind it, display or to center back. That doesn't work really well because I'm using a see-through fill. The other option is I have to not show the herringbone strutting or show it differently. So I could give this a white background and bring it to front. And I don't see the herringbone strutting. Or I send it to the back. And I change the herringbone strutting so it's only got a dashed outline. And maybe I take its color off so it's white and then that's less messy. So that's now representing more truly with what we're trying to see. So either of these work, and now the funny reality is in this particular project, we actually have both. Some places in the house there is blanket insulation, and other places in the house there is um, foam insulation as underfloor insulation. So let's repeat this step. So we found this insulation in the object library, and we created this insulation based on the hexagon fill 